This here is a pretty cool device. This is the prototype of a mini satellite called CubeSat. And when I was young, space was something way out of my league. It was pretty expensive, actually unaffordable. It was hard, it was complex. It was something for people uh, like astronauts, the NASA, the military maybe. But that's not true anymore. Because of the co convergence of technologies, uh, space is actually becoming pretty affordable. And for only 30,000, oh no, even 15,000 dollars at the moment, you can make your own satellite, or buy your own mini satellite that you can launch into space. But it's even better nowadays, because this prototype here, you can make yourself with a little Arduino set and a 3D printer. For only 50 euros, you can make your own tiny satellite and to play with it. So space is no longer a boundary that only can be explored by companies with big budgets, but also by kids in school. And I think that's cool. Why am I telling this? Well, um, in a lot of fields, things uh, are becoming far more cheaper and easier than ever. And when you see websites like instructables.com, I don't know who of you is familiar with instructables already? Not everyone. Instructables.com is like Wikipedia, but then for manuals, how to build something. And it's the biggest database on earth with manuals, how to build anything, whether that will be an exoskeleton or an MRI machine or even a tiny little CubeSat. So it's the biggest database on earth with instructions how to make or how to build anything or improve something. And at the moment, two billion people on the planet can like, tweet and share anything that's being published there. But you only need one person that has a great idea how to improve it. And this way, slowly but surely, all material objects on earth are becoming easier to make, cheaper, more fun, more accurate, more beautiful. And this is, I think, tremendous news on a mankind level. I think that all big problems on Earth are actually bureaucratic problems at its core. Whether you look at education, healthcare, sustainability, the knowledge is already there. The people are already there. The passion is everywhere. There is technology, there are ideas. But somehow we didn't manage yet to make it easier. So governments and companies tend to organize stuff in a bureaucratic way. Well, bureaucracy in itself serves its functions. It's a very good idea to have bureaucracy, but I think we have too much of it. And now, in this age where information is freely accessible and available to everyone, the way bureaucracies function or don't function anymore are not always the best solution to accomplish something. The main tools of the bureaucrat are money and paper. And there is a mystic bond between those two somehow. Every time you want to accomplish something in a company or in a government, people tend to think in terms of money. It's called budget over there, it's like slang. And if you need budget and you go to the guy who's in charge of the budget, the first thing they say is, can you put something down on paper, which slows you down. And, um, and even you might even need a business plan. Before you know it, you spend a lot of scarce time on this planet producing paper in order to get some money. Uh, I think that's not a very wise idea. Well, there's another thing with bureaucracy. With this world moving so fast, with uh, uh, inventions done so, uh, so big and huge and often, um, I think a lot of people in bureaucracies, governments, companies, feel threatened. And they try to withhold change. They want to keep the status quo. And they're trying to hinder new things. And they also use those tools again, money and paper, to slow things down. And I think that's net par se a very good idea in an age where we need solutions. So we have to figure out other ways to get things done. Specifically, get past bureaucracy, which I think means go past money and paper. The good thing about that is if you, don't, uh, you can start immediately. If you figure out a way how to do things without money, you don't have to wait until you have it, you know, so you can start straight away. Also, you don't have to quit when you don't have money anymore because you didn't use the money anyway. In order to do that, you have to be resourceful in deploying the resources that are abundantly there. And technology in this network and information age is helping us 
finding that faster and easier than ever. This is the way Wikipedia worked. So 200,000 people worked together to create the biggest, the best encyclopedia on earth, making the Encyclopedia Britannica obsolete. Even if you could afford an Encyclopedia Britannica, most of the times that you wanted to know something, you were nowhere near those books because they were at your home while you were taking a walk. In the upcoming five years, five billion people on the planet have access to the biggest encyclopedia on Earth. I think Wikipedia is social swarm technology enabling altruism on a very big scale. It hasn't got to do anything with traditional economics. It's because we can that we're building this and everybody can benefit from that. In my work, as a boardroom consulting, uh, 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 consultant, a boardroom sparring partner, uh, I, I travel across the world. I speak with a lot of boards of governments and companies. And most of the time they phone me because they want to set things in motion. And they're obviously not very good at it. They're also very careful and shy on set things in motion because they don't want to take risks. And uh, because, yeah, if you spend a lot of money and you don't know the outcome, that's risky. And people, especially CFOs, don't like risks. Um, and then I say, well, you can't go past all those fears. And I call it my holy trinity of beating bureaucracy. It's actually pretty easy. The only thing you have to do is to bring together people, information and ideas in a different way. People, information, ideas. You need all of them. Ideas are worthless. You, if you want to uh, 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 change something, you have to materialize ideas in the here and now. And to do that, you need people you don't know and you need information you don't have. And again, in this network and information age, people and information are easier to find than ever. Uh, uh, and this is also true for people with no experience and no money and no degree at all. So this is happening worldwide in a tremendous space. So I had a great talk, uh, I think six months ago with a general of the, uh, of the Dutch army. And he complained to me, I want to set things in motion, Martin. I want to innovate, but I don't have budget. And I started to laugh. I said, yeah, that's your problem. You still think you need money. Are there any nerds here in the room? <laughs> Proud to be a nerd? Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. So what's the one thing that the Ministry of Defense, the army has, that they could get, uh, give away for free? Well. It tends that um, on the bucket list of most of the 50,000 uh, enthusiastic uh, ICT nerds in the Netherlands, most of them want, want once in their life, they want to be underwater in a submarine. Or they want to fly a fighter jet. Or want to be in an Apache helicopter. This is like the dream of, the typical dream of a lot of nerds. Well, you cannot buy that anywhere because it's not for sale. So the one thing that the Ministry uh, of Defense has is access to this stuff. But they never thought of it as a resource that they could actually deploy. I travel a lot and I, uh, I, one of my favorite continents is the continent of Africa. And uh, they have a lot of challenges over there. And one of the challenges that I uh, find interesting particularly are the challenges in townships. And uh, I advise a lot of um, um, uh, companies, but also a telecom company. And traditionally, telecom companies tend, to, uh, if they want to do something good for the planet, they hire consultants, spend some money, stuff like that. But what is the one thing that a telecom company has plenty of, really abundantly? It's data, it's broadband, because it's just hanging in the sky. You can just tap into that, no problem at all. So if they could identify the 1% of the kind-hearted entrepreneurial spirits in the townships, and they could enable them with free data, which doesn't cost them anything, they can set things in motion. Because if those people that are well-connected are doing great stuff, they can educate themselves, connect with other solutions and entrepreneurs across the world, and then things start moving faster in those townships. You don't need money for it, you only have to give them access to something that's already free, broadband to them. So I think we have to change the way we deal with money. I don't think we should use money as the main resources if we want to set function in motion. I think we have to go past the money part and figure out where are the resources we actually need to, to deploy something. 
If we do this, I think we can narrow or bridge the gap between a civil servant from a governmental perspective and, um, uh, and the citizen. And if we would do this, we would bridge the gap for companies between a customer and an employee. Because if you can identify, and technology can enable that, the 1% of your customers or your civil servants that actually are able to do something which is far more valuable than the stuff that you're trying to buy now in the market, well, it's a good idea. Because if you can set things in motion without money, if you can innovate without money, you can innovate without financial risk. And if you can innovate without financial risk, you can innovate without fear. And if you can innovate without fear, everybody can jump in and contribute. And I think we need to fix that. You have to focus on people, information and ideas. You have to use technology to figure out where they are. And you can start straight away. And if we fix things this way, well, I think uh, we don't have problems anymore. Problem, uh, the word problem is a very popular word amongst uh, pessimists. And at that, we like to call problems, of course, challenges, because we're optimists. Since half a year, I don't use the word challenge anymore. I use a better word. I use the word puzzle, because I love solving puzzles. And what happens when you call things just a puzzle? So all the challenges on Earth are actually just puzzles. And all those people together, solving stuff on Instructables.com, solving stuff on Wikipedia, they're actually solving puzzles. And every puzzle that's being solved will be a piece of a bigger puzzle, which will be the piece of an even bigger puzzle. Whether it will be seaweed, exoskeleton, or whatever. So I think we live now in a days where we can playfully find other people that can contribute to puzzles. That has nothing to do with, with business or making money and stuff like that. And I bet that even gravity is just a puzzle that we didn't solve yet. And actually, there's a Dutch professor, uh, Erik Verlinde in Amsterdam, who's on his way fixing gravity, because everything we thought about gra gravity is wrong. So I think the upcoming 10, 15 years will be one of the most amazing moments in time where everybody can contribute to puzzle. So one more thing. Whatever you were planning to do tomorrow or on Monday in your working life, don't. Don't do it alone. Because there's always somebody you can find who is better at it than you. Who has far more experience in what you want to achieve. Has more access to information and even better ideas than you have. The only thing you have to do is there to ask and using all the platforms that are already there. Because we're trying to fix things ourselves and that's not a very wise idea. The most important lesson that I learned in accomplishing stuff is that every time you dare to ask and somebody says no, it's never about you. And if, you, if somebody says no to you after you ask the question, you can always ask the next question. Why? And then you learn something new. Happy puzzling. Yeah.